so Russ, you do know that we are surrounded by this. Yeah. Literally. Our topic today, we can't get away from it. No matter you look left or you look right. Yeah, you walk every time we come home, we we can't avoid seeing it. No, it's we not possible. Drive past one every day, <laughs> and that's because today's topic we are talking about Dutch colonial Dutch colonial homes. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. So Dutch colonial homes, whether you may realize this or not, are actually really, really popular in the Racine area. And we will actually put up a um, a photo of a Dutch colonial when we get near to the end. Yeah. So you can kind of see after we talk about it for a little bit. But let's talk about Dutch colonial, the history, where it yeah. came from. And how many houses do you think in Racine there are that are Dutch colonials? Or well, versions indeed, of indeed all up and down the east coast because there's loads. Yep. So let's talk about Dutch colonials today. What makes a house Dutch colonial? Well, a lot of it's to do with a gambrel roof. That is a lot of it, isn't it? Yeah. It's the old. If you don't know what a gambrel roof is, it's like a barn roof. Mm -hmm. So it's got really steep shoulders on the roof mm -hmm. that overhang the actual main part of the property so, you know what i just thought of and then very low sloping on the top do you know what i just thought of a gambrel roof is actually like a girl with a flip in her hair I like a flip in her hair when you think about it because the woman from the top she comes down and then her hair flips up a little bit oh uh, true and it's or like, like a bell yeah or like a bell that's another great example of what yeah. a gambrel roof, roof looks like it's very much the shape of a bell yeah, because you you go narrow at the top, then it comes straight down. Well, not straight. Then, it does angle out. It does yeah, angle out slightly, a little bit, and then it scoops out. And that's what I'm saying. The flip in the hair. Yeah. It's like a woman who has their hair flipped up mm -hmm. <laughs> on the ends with a what they call a flip. Yeah, you know, comes down to their shoulders and then flips up. That's what a gambrel roof kind of looks like. Yeah, and it was at least the most pure version because of the British. Well, no, gambrel <laughs> roofs weren't done because of the British, but no, they were the Dutch over colonial, here, though. But Dutch colonials. Okay, yeah. so first of all, let's talk a little bit about the history. So Dutch colonials are actually something that has existed in America pretty much since the beginning. Yeah. Um, like in the 1600s. Oh yeah, going back as far as very that, popular. Yeah. And when you yeah. think about it, it makes sense because, like, the Pilgrims who who landed in Plymouth. In 1620, we got, you they know, come Plymouth, via Ma Holland. They, exactly. They originally, they, they were actually kind of exiled from England and pushed over to Holland where they lived for uh, about, it was actually about 10 to 20 years. They lived yeah. there trying to find religious freedom and then came back to Liverpool and then went on to the New World. Yeah. So, and that's, of course, where they ended up then at Plymouth Rock. And they, but they would, of course, been influenced by the architecture in Holland. And, and there were some Dutch, um, Pilgrims went with them as well. Well, yeah, they, if that was the thing is that when they were in Holland, uh, the people who originally left from England to go to Holland, then when they were in Holland, they still had their churches and they picked up uh -huh. convert converts and stuff. And so, of course, some of the people there were Dutch and they you know, came over. And came and over. That was part of that was part of who yeah. came with them. And so we see that there's Dutch. What we now refer to as Dutch colonial. Um, yeah, those Dutch homes have existed pretty much since the beginning of America. Along the East Coast. Yes. So you um, primarily see them in New was York, originally and Pennsylvania. Just like uh, one to one and a half stories high. They wasn't. So I thought two that was really stories. interesting. I understand. Uh, okay. And I always knew that, but I didn't understand why. And it's all your fault. What is yeah. this with you Brits? I know. It's all you and your taxation and all of this stuff. Yeah, what so, is it that you've well, influenced America so much by yeah. your taxes? Your taxes. Wait, it wasn't just America. <laughs> it was all over yeah, the you're, Commonwealth. Yeah, the British taxes have affected the yes. entire world in our culture well, we today. To pay for our wars somehow. <laughs> and the, the way they did it was they used to do window tax on some places. That's or closet why, tax. Or closet tax. Yep. Or they used to do 
a second, second story, story tax. tax. So if you had two stories, if you or were, more, right, if you yeah. had two stories or more, you had to pay an additional tax on your home. So the Gambrel, the Dutch colonial Gambrel roof was a way to get around being taxed. And I find that yeah. fascinating <laughs> because technically with the roof being all that part, they said, oh, well, that created living space, but it wasn't living space. It, it was, was not a two story <laughs> home. It wasn't a two-story home. It was a story and a half. It was yeah. the attic. It wasn't actually uh -huh. a story. Although that's where, especially when I was looking at the other stuff, as this moved into the prairies, they said that they actually used that, like, for all the kids they started having. Uh -huh. They would put them up in the attic area. Yeah. So, like, if you see Little House on the Prairie, the kids who were upstairs in yeah. that... No, they didn't, they didn't technically have a Dutch colonial on Little House on the Prairie. No. But that idea of throwing the kids up in the loft for their sleeping quarters... Very mm -hmm. much so for those who settled in oh, the yeah. prairies. Yeah. So it's kind of fascinating that Dutch colonial started pretty much since the beginning of America. Yeah. Mostly, of course, on the East Coast, but not so much in Virginia or the Carolinas. And I wonder why that is. I wonder if it was just maybe a weather condition thing or because maybe more Dutch people settled further north. Mm, I think more Dutch people settled th further north. Yeah, of course, we do have um, like, you know, the Pennsylvania Dutch and things like yeah. that. So mm -hmm. that was definitely an influence over there. Yeah, and so they brought their craftsmen with them, and yep. they, you know, they built, people built houses so, that they knew. So what are some of the other features, though, of a Dutch colonial? So we know the Gambrel roof is probably the most distinctive feature. That's the most distinctive, but also like the Dutch doors. Yeah. So most of them would have a Dutch door, which well, is... Well, let's explain like what a, a Dutch door. door... Yeah, let's explain what a Dutch door is, because some people don't know what yeah. a Dutch door is, because it's not very common, and... Even now, when you see a Dutch colonial, they aren't going to have a Dutch door, most likely. Not always, no. In fact, they're most likely not going to in mm -hmm. our modern usage of a Dutch colonial. So a Dutch door, though, um, it, I don't even know why. Why did the Dutch do it and not other people? They used to do it a lot in farmhouses, and they even used them a lot in the UK, but they got the name Dutch door because it originated over there. Okay. Where so, the lower half, you could leave shut and yep. open the upper half. Yeah. So the animals and stuff like that couldn't come into the house. Right. Because most people had... You and know. you still see this a lot in boats. You'll see, like, a lot of times, like, in a pilot house of a boat, you'll yeah. see what you might refer to as a Dutch door, where the top half of the door can swing well open, open, but the bottom half is kept shut. Like, it's mm -hmm. open the top for ventilation, yeah. and the bottom was is left shut. So, for, you know against the weather and against if there's splash yeah. on the deck you don't want that coming into the pilot yeah, house yeah you don't want water coming into the pilot house yeah just because you're crashing yeah. through waves um, so but yeah you have a, a lot of dutch doors in farmhouses and stuff like that and where we you couldn't farm really animals, find chickens and that roaming around exactly but what i find interesting is i don't know why i mean obviously they must have originated in holland but there it's been so long that they've been around that i couldn't even find anything that said yeah like it's they've been around in Holland for so long I couldn't even find anything that said like when did they first start being called Dutch doors because we're not even sure it was that long ago. So you've got the gambrel roof, you've got the the that, overhanging eaves. So that's the other thing is that a lot of a really true Dutch colonial is going to have those eaves that hang over. Yeah. And you're going to see that. So you've got some cover when you're standing outside the house. Right. And the colonial part is that most of them, those those flipped out parts of the roof are held by Pope, by... Um, they would sometimes have posts on them yes. around the deck or area. Or pillars, which is yeah. what the colonial part is. Because mm -hmm. colonial homes are usually very... They have pillars. A, a, a true colonial is going to have four pillars yeah. on the outside of the house. It's going to have... Two that like flank the door and then uh -huh. two on the outside edge as well, usually yeah. evenly spaced. So a Dutch colonial has the, that swoopy roof, mm -hmm. but it's supported by pillars on the outside. Yeah. Now, the more modern type um, of Dutch colonials that we have nowadays, the front door isn't always on the side where the pillars are. Correct. It's they sometimes on the on end, the so end. to speak. Yeah. So you can actually see that roof line. Right, from the street. From like the when street. you're looking straight out. Yeah. And that's why we say we're surrounded by them because our house is a Cape Cod, but both of the houses, either house on either side of us, both on our right and our left of our house, both of those are Dutch what we would colonial. roughly call yeah. Dutch colonials. Mm -hmm. The reason I would say roughly is because neither of them have 
um, the swoopy eaves. No. But it is the modern interpretation of a Dutch colonial. Mm -hmm. And the distinctive feature is that it looks like a barn. Yeah. The the the, the roof line the looks like roof, a barn yeah. roof, basically. What mm -hmm. we would associate with a barn roof. And um, generally speaking, nowadays they have like dormer windows coming out of them um, yes. as well. Yes. They usually have yeah. dormers coming out of that roof area yeah. as well. And, and the ones on either side of us do. Or yeah. at least the one on this side does. The one on the other side doesn't so much. No. Um, but... Absolutely, they have the dormer windows, um, and that they would barn like have a roof. Nice central fireplace. Yes, absolutely. But the other key feature for Dutch colonials is the use of natural materials. Yes. So they oftentimes will have a cedar shake roof instead uh -huh. of, especially the more upscale ones. They'll have a cedar shake, and I will say that the one difficulty that both of our neighbors have had with their roofs is getting regular shingles to stick properly. Yeah. Both of them have had new roofs in the 12 years that I've been here, and both of their roofs have started to fall apart I've in 12 lost, years. Yeah, I've lost Because they shingles. just have these regular shingles, and those shingles are not made to be nailed. Regular shingles are not made to be nailed at like a upright a angle. Such a steep angle, they want it, yeah. they, they really do better when they can kind of grip on each other I as think, they... I think, you know, what would be perfect on a gambrel roof what would, be perfect? would be metal. Yeah, actually, a metal roof would probably do really well yeah. on a on a gambrel on uh -huh. a Dutch colonial, and of course, it would determine it would be maybe to you know whether it's in the country or not. I think it would look more appropriate in the country, but mm -hmm. I think cedar shake. But if you're in the city area, cedar shake is a really good option yeah. for a gambrel roof as well because cedar, being that natural material, you can actually kind of curve the wood to yeah. match the curves that or you need to. Or go back to. to the original type of roof, which was thatched. Which we think was thatched, yeah. yeah. Well, at least some of the ones that were done in the prairie areas, like in the yeah. western part of the United States, were thatched roofs. Absolutely. In the 1600s, yeah. They yeah, would have absolutely. Been using now, they do have sash windows. They don't yeah. have louvered open windows. They are sash windows, which is good, because that's mm -hmm. a pretty standard window now that we use. It's called a... Yeah. That's that's pretty much what everybody has now, is a sash window. And a lot of them would have wooden shutters. Because yes. Because that was a way of Locking out the wind. Yes. Especially in the winter. Yes, absolutely. So if it has, and so even now on the more inexpensive version of it, you still often will see fake shutters yeah. to the side, like the, the fake shutter flanking. Because it's that look. They're it's the going look for the of, same aesthetic. Correct, yeah. correct. You're going for that same aesthetic and that same look of wooden shutters. So you've got the Dutch door, you've got a fireplace and a chimney usually. Um, the natural materials are a big deal. They do a lot of them. They would do the bottom floor in stone and then the top yeah. floor would be just out of timber. Mm -hmm. And that was how, why it wasn't considered a second story because the whole second story wasn't stone or brick no. or whatever. Oh, you wouldn't do a living space in timber. And now, of course, most of our houses are timber here in the, timber because here in the it's States. Plentiful. Yeah, it's very plentiful here. And of course, most of our houses and are built in fully. In the UK, they used all the trees to make ships to go and invade places like America. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but what I think is interesting is that the term Dutch colonial, though, was not used until the 1920s. Yeah. So yeah, even that though surprised the, me a bit because even though the housing style existed yeah. in the 1600s and 1700s, there was a re and there was a revival of that style of building in the 1800s yeah. because because there was this whole revival of naturalism. It was like a reaction to the um, to the technology, quote unquote. Like there was this reaction to the industrial revolution mm -hmm. and everything being very industrial. And like even steampunk yeah. was kind of a was like the very industrial revolution. But the reaction, the people who didn't really like that overly industrial look, they moved towards a natural look. And because Dutch colonials had a natural look with yeah. the stone. And well, now they didn't have to use so much stone because you had bricks. Correct. Then. So, you know, by the 1920s, they were building with bricks. So that was easier to get a structure up yep and keep it but what's nice interesting is this was in the 1800s that they had this mm -hmm. revival towards natural materials yeah. and many of those were built with stone yeah and many of those were built out on the prairies as well and mm -hmm. like in the settlers and things so um so the 1800s but what's interesting is so we had them here in the 16 and 1700s then yes. in the late 1800s, there was a revival of that style of home. 
But it wasn't until the 1920s that we actually gave it a name. <laughs> well, it, it took us just hundreds of years. Called a Dutch house before. And... Oh, who knows? It doesn't even. We yeah. couldn't even find anything that said exactly when that happened, except for what they were called prior to 1920s. Just. A house with a barn roof? I don't know. It's like, I want that kind of house. Or did they try to disguise it as a barn and not I don't know. a house? I don't know. Possibly. Yeah. But anyway, so we know there was this revival. We know that they weren't even called that until the 1920s. But when yeah. we go through Racine, and this is how it relates to the Living in Racine channel, of course, yeah, how many we, houses would you say we have that are that are Dutch colonial here? We see quite a few. Oh, There's my goodness. And loads. we don't even have that many Dutch people. If, like... The major ethnic groups that have settled in Racine, none of them have ever been Dutch. We don't have a huge Dutch contingency here. Um, no. We have some Danish we contingency. Have Danish. We have Danish. We have German. We have um, we have quite a few, um, not Romanian. Um, Serbs. Um, Serbs, but we do have some like Eastern European. But of course, we don't. I'm lots not gonna, of Italians. Of we course. have lots of Italians. We have lots of like Eastern. I would call Eastern European because over the centuries, the nationality has changed mm -hmm. like over the last century the nationalities that's in the irish secondary. we don't have a lot of irish settled here though it was mostly well, you german would think there was on some paddy's day well no that's just because wisconsinites <laughs> like to drink okay so that's I'm, the german I'll, I'll be in ireland s no, no, shortly no no, no that's 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 the, that's the germans <laughs> the germans that, that that's the german beer culture yeah um but in racine itself i mean on our street alone we only have one two three four, five, six houses on one side and one house on the other side of the street. So mm -hmm. seven houses total on our street. And it, the one on the corner is a Dutch colonial too, isn't it? Uh, Down this way? I think I'm that's a Dutch sure. colonial. I think it may be, so yeah. we have out of the yeah. seven houses, we have three of them are Dutch colonials. Yeah. So, and I would say that that is not, I would say about a third of the houses in Racine I would say 25 to 30 percent of them are probably Dutch colonial style. Yeah. Um, and I would say the older the house is, the more likely it is it's a Dutch colonial. And when you look at it, it's quite an easy design rather than mm -hmm. like our type of roof mm -hmm. is all over the place. Now, what are the things that people have said? So obviously I've talked about the problem with the Dutch colonial being that it seems at least our neighbors both struggle with keeping shingles on their roofs. Yeah. Um, what do you think is another problem that you discovered well, it's not so good for weight bearing. So, um, right. because of the low pitch at the very top, right? Um, if there's a big snowfall, that's a lot of weight on that one particular so area. So, if you own a Dutch colonial home, you should probably pay attention to it if we have a yes. really big snowstorm. Yeah. Now, in Racine, I don't think you can think... put like the ice melt wires up there or something like that if you needed to. Yep. But. The other way is they have strengthened, they have to strengthen it inside. Yes. And so. But when know. you're going through a home inspection, if there, if you are looking at a home inspection on a mm -hmm. Dutch colonial and there are cracked timbers in the attic area or in that crawl That's space. That's certainly an this, area to pay attention it's to. It's absolutely yes. something to pay attention to. Now, if the house yeah. has been there for a hundred years, however, like most of them have been mm -hmm. in Racine um, and they don't see cracking, then it means it was probably built pretty well and it had yes. that additional structure to support yeah, that strength, load because we do yeah. have snow here sometimes that's pretty heavy yeah yeah very wet i would say our snow here is very wet and i wonder whether that would make the ideal roof the metal roof because it would slide off easier it would slide off easier and metal itself would add some of the structure it would, it would add, add some, would add some, some strength, strength yeah it would add some strength yeah. having a metal roof that's a really good point yeah. i hadn't thought about that you're so clever wow what about that <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so that's what a Dutch colonial is, folks. And we're going to go ahead and put a picture up so that you can see what a Dutch colonial yeah. looks like. Um, so they look amazing. They, I actually really like the design of the roof. Yeah. Because they do give I that prefer, extra space up there. And I will say, I prefer a Dutch colonial, though, that where the roof... Um, I don't like the Dutch colonials as much that are where the door enters the end where where the door where when it's this way and the door is right there. Uh -huh. I prefer when they're turned on the side and what you're seeing is that yeah. slopey roof and a couple of dormers and then the door is in because the center. Because then you get a nice... Or even off to the side. You can have a really nice patio porch. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there was underneath. one other feature we forgot to mention. In a true Dutch colonial, it is more of an open plan on the main level. 
Yeah. Yeah. So because it was like meant to be like one big room. Yeah. So it is more of an open plan. Very than really much true. like a barn. Yeah. Very much like a barn. And basically. of course, they used to originally they would cook by the fireplace, which is yep. why the fireplace was central to central to the house, to the yeah. building. Yeah. It also would heat the whole building. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's good for cooking. So I wonder if our modern pole barns that have that Dutch colonial style, I wonder if that would make yeah. a really cool house. I, I know think people it who have, I know people who have yeah. made houses out of pole barns yeah. because they really like that whole feature. Mm -hmm. So that would be an interesting thing. Yeah. So tell us what you think, guys. What do you think about Dutch colonials? Some people, I do think most people, it's either a love or a hate. They either really like that barn style look or they don't like it at all. So let us know in the comments, what do you think? Do you like the look of a Dutch colonial or... Did you even know what a Dutch colonial was before this video? Yeah. Hopefully you learned something today. Or do today. you have a design of house that you want to know more about that yeah. you want us to feature? Yeah. So let us know in the comments below. What do you think of Dutch colonials? Um, do us a favor. Click like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. And you know what? If you found this interesting or fun, share it. Share our content yeah. because that's how we build our channel is you are loyal subscribers sharing it on to other people. And we are gaining in subscription. So that's really exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. We've, got, yeah, we've, we've been, we've been growing. The comments and, we've been looking at the comments. We don't yeah. always get to the comments right away, but we do answer every single comment on our page. Yeah. Now, we are full time. This is not what we do full time. We don't do YouTube full time. So we have full time jobs as real estate agents. Uh -huh. So if we don't get to it right away, it's because we're working our full time jobs. <laughs> but we do get to the comments before the next week for sure. So yeah. at least within six, seven days, you're going to have an answer to your comment uh -huh. or a reply of some kind. So if you have a question, put it below about Dutch Colonials. If you have a comment about Dutch Colonials, let us know. But most importantly, share this video on to anyone else you think might not know what a Dutch colonial is or not. Yeah. But thanks for joining us once again. And, and bye till next time. Bye for now.